Holy dingus. Other than a huge thank you. I, I don't know what else to say. I, what do you do while people sing happy birthday to you? No, look, seriously, thank you so much. To understand the gravity of my thanks, right, I'm giving you the full backstory, right? And it's gonna be like a big ol- <laughs> I swear this is gonna turn into a ramble. I've written this out, but I'm doomed. Because the circumstances on how I got here doing this, they don't make any sense to me. Well, I'm a drummer. Like, drums absolutely took over my life as soon as I started playing since like the age of nine or something. I grew up in a proper podunk country town, like the nearest McDonald's was 40 minutes away via highway speed, no barriers, winding country roads, take me home, full of kangaroos to hit from 6 p.m. onwards. It's where my love of cars was born though, because you bet I did that drive for some nuggets, mate. I mixed concrete as a kid for pocket money. You know, as a lot of country kids do. <laughs> I had a forklift and a bobcat license as a teenager. And mate, I knew how to dig holes and weld steel. Where do you think I get this Aussie droll from, mate? People complain about how messed up my hands are, so well, what do you expect? <laughs> when smoko anyway. But as a kid, there wasn't much in the way of music tuition, except for my local drum teacher. You know, I'm up in podunk nowhere. When I was 16, I was driving 45 minutes one way to the nearest school that offered it so I could actually play in bands. During this time, my iPod was my sidekick. This is the first one I grabbed out of the pile. I, sh I should, it's, look, it's HP. My band rehearsal music was on there. My music exam pieces to play along to were on there. And it never let me down. Never. We made a tight team my iPod and me. From school went to TAFE to get my diploma in music, I got a perfect score at my third year recital and the lecturers begged me to then go to university. I didn't really want it. And I auditioned for the jazz degree, which is, you know, jazz is the ground floor of all pop music. I got in! But the hour and 15 driving to the center of Adelaide wasn't something I could do daily anymore. Uh, it was time to move out. Grabbed my meager belongings, it was called my iPod and phone, and headed to the city to live in a three bedroom house with five people living in it. Mmm, uni share houses. But like, here's the thing guys, I'm a podunk country kid. I'd never taken a bus before. I I'm 21 and just literally lost in the city. <laughs> we didn't have buses, it was called get a lift or drive yourself, take a cow. So I was in real deep at this point, like fully committed to this crazy career choice of just being a musician. I wanted to be the guy that you call for anything, any genre, any sort of gig, any time frame, like hired gun of sorts. You know, I was pretty brainwashed for it, so you know, I was practicing until one in the morning, taking every rehearsal offer I could to just get known in Adelaide's music scene. And that's when I lost my dad to illness. Kind of went numb, I suppose. I was already so overexposed to the high stress life of uni, cause yeah, it's hard. I mean, half the class quits in the first year sometimes. I promised dad I was gonna smash it and I smashed it. I scored the Jazz Award twice, which is given to the student with the highest marks. Uh, in my final year, I was gigging with the professors themselves. I was booked for studio work, I did full-size stadium gigs, I, I've done touring, orchestra pit work. I even did some mascot work for Port Power Footy Club. And then straight out of uni, there were schools lined up for me to become their drum teacher. And I had like 90 students straight away. It was all working out really good during Adelaide Fringe season. My calendar would explode with like international touring acts that needed a guy to do a single rehearsal and then hit the big paid show that night. That was me, baby. This is my dream. A lot of front bar and pub gigs that we did, we didn't even have set lists because this is what we've committed our lives to. We could happily segue from Metallica's Nothing Else Matters straight into Kylie Minogue's The Locomotion with no words spoken or even plans to do so. So much fun. But a few years gigging and teaching, I learned just how hard it is to get paid as a musician. Not finding work, I could find gigs all the time. It was doing the work, but then getting the money you were promised. We were all self-employed. We would work at school, but as a contractor, oh, 90 students, hey? Well, that's 90 pairs of parents you need to make invoices for, and worse, chase money out of. A third of them would dog you every school term. You know, you have to constantly check your bank to make sure it hasn't arrived, so you're not pestering after they've paid. Or maybe they didn't add my invoice number or their kid's name. So many would literally just send unnamed money to me and expect it all to work out. Even Adelaide Casino owed me money. It 
takes over a month to get paid for one of their gigs. Like, guys, I saw you empty those pokey machines. I, I'm pretty sure you got that 200 bucks for that awful 1am gig I did. At this point, I was working upwards of 18 hour days, and I mean it. Getting up at 6 to teach all morning, and then rehearsing in the evenings with our original bands that we would, oh, we would hope would take off. But then the weekends were full of regular work gigs, like weddings, functions, front bar stuff, and yet, I didn't have any money in my pockets. All my spare time was chasing tiny payments that I was owed. I lived in the cheapest house I could find. Still to this day, it's the cheapest house. I made it feel like home, but it wasn't nice. It had no insulation in the roof. It would boil in the summer and freeze in the winter. Drafts all through the building, so the electricity bill was humongous just trying to stay barely comfortable. It's like 2016 now, I'm two years out of uni. During this time, I'd gotten the courage to write my own music. Music, and you know me, I always have to make it stupid. So I was remixing The Simpsons with GarageBand and iMovie on my iPad. I never cross promote my channels really. I mean, cause I'd rather people find it because it's what they were looking for. And I'm gonna tell you that channel because it's real important to the story. The channel is called Dankness and it's my first ever go at writing music. As a drummer, we are notoriously bad at it. I got some tracks I'm real proud of uh, and uh, there's a lot of stinkers. <laughs> But that's the ratio, welcome to it. But Dank must spawn this amazing underground community. It's weird and fun for us hardcore Simpsons fans. All my music mates are big nerds of the show like me, so we always joked about how quotes could turn into tracks. So when students didn't show up to their lessons, I always had my MacBook there to work on a track, and it's how I got them done. Spare hour at a gig? Well, I'll do some more work on the Bridge of Blurst of Times. Hello Mr. Thompson was written in a rural hotel room when I was touring with a Scottish duo true story. The tiny little YouTube payments coming in was a humongous help. I was living real cheap anyways, I just wanted reliability. <laughs> and you know, due to folks not paying me, quite often I was putting fuel in my car with a credit card, which is, mate, just digging a hole, you know. Credit cards are financial shovels. Then Dankmas got demonetized with no way to contest it, Google, thank you. And then during this time, my granddad passed away. But amazingly, he left us all some money. Like a few thousand bucks. I'd never seen that before. I didn't want to waste it. I put it all into a PC to practice video editing with. Making videos is always something I've loved to do and somehow it felt like an investment of the money. But the battle to get paid was lost when I finally defaulted on my Spotify payment in 2019. I didn't even have 15 bucks. I'd worked so hard that year that I actually had my first proper meltdown. I'm. I'm Totally comfortable in sharing that. Right, Cause I was getting up at six to be in the car by 6.30 to drive to the other side of town because that's where the teaching work was and I was living where I could afford. I'd teach until 3 p.m., leg it to a rehearsal at five, have something resembling dinner while putting on a motorbike helmet to ride into the city to sit in an orchestra pit for two week long running show. There were no parks for kilometers. The bike was the only way. The show would finish at 11 p.m. It's a Tuesday because it was every night for two weeks. Motorbike ride through the city in rain to be home before midnight. I can't get to sleep straight away. I just ran out of an orchestra pit. <laughs> so honestly, it's more like 2 a.m. now and I gotta get up at six in the morning to do it again for two weeks solid. I got nine days in before I woke up to my alarm and I just laid there. 10 a.m., Just I just stared at my phone and watched it ring. It all just felt so pointless. You know, that two week show only paid 300 bucks in total. And there were three months worth of rehearsals. <laughs> I wasn't up for teaching that day. I pull up in my $500 Honda to these private Catholic schools where I see my student hop out of a Porsche Cayenne and the mum leans out the driver's window and goes, oh, we're a bit tight on money this week. Can we give you the 60 bucks next week? And I'm being serious. I wish I was joking. Thankfully, the school was really supportive and like they even helped me chase a few folks down for me because, you know, I loved my students. I'd watched them grow up. I've been teaching for years at this point. Like, 13-year-olds were now 18-year-olds. But Dankmas was on Spotify by this point. I had a few hundred patrons pitching in. And after Google finally remonetized the channel after two years, it was enough to help out. Um, it's why I turn off ads here and go full-time on Patreon, guys. Like, Google stinks and I got history with them.
I was still in that dump hole house, keeping my expenses way low. And gigs were actually picking up now. And I figured out who were the lane gigs that wouldn't pay and who the awesome professionals were where it was actually enjoyable to go to work. But if my life hadn't been on the seat of my pants already, I took another huge jump. 2019, I decided to quit teaching. I didn't take that decision lightly, as for most of us musicians, teaching was the most stable employment. I pondered the whole year about it. It was also super sad. I was proper mates with these kids. I'd known them for years. I broke it to them with a whole term left in the year so we could at least hang out proper and we had heaps of time to say goodbye. You betcha I cried a few times. It was a real shock to some of the kids. But hey, a lot of them have been watching this channel this whole time, eh? So, hey Liam. But I did it to focus on my passion of gigging, playing the drums, and to have a go at this tiny YouTube channel that was going. I had gig bookings for over the next year and a half in advance at the moment. I literally could just get by on that money alone. Thanks to low expenses and my amazing Dankmas supporters. And Spotify listens on top of it. I was going to be okay. It was scary, but I'm, I'm jumping for a dream here. Let's go. So long as nothing in the world changes. Nothing. If everything stays the same, I'll just get by. COVID. What's a gig? Packed venues? You know the story. And us musicians just got cleaned out. Teaching gigs in school still went on. You know, like Zoom lessons, Skype, you know. Uh, but I'd quit all that. <laughs> well, uh, there was something else I was doing. Hey, look, all right, we've got to rewind. I told you this was a big ramble. Right, rewind. <laughs> so back in 2019, when I ran out of money, you know, no Spotify. And that's when I reached into the drawer and grabbed my iPod again. And naturally, you know, the battery was flat. <laughs> no worries, I've been fixing my own iPod since. I was 14. The first thing I ever fixed on my own was an iPod mini. I got it for 50 bucks off an old bank with a bad battery. I knew you could flash mod these to replace the drives, but it wasn't really for extra capacity. I mean, it was more for liability and a cheap way to fix them because these drives are expensive. I needed some spare parts, so I went looking on eBay. And that's when I saw that iPods were worth nothing. Bulk lots of 50 for like 100 bucks. And yet a working one of these with a new battery, a nice clean case sold, for 50. So for some pocket money to get by, I was fixing and selling these for a little bit. That's actually where this iPad comes in. This is my fourth gen iPad that I used at university. I did so many gigs with this thing. All my study, the battery is actually still good. It's heats funny. It totally works. Uh, when I upgraded, their mum had it for ages until it was too slow to run Facebook. Then it became the kitchen PDF cookbook reader. And then it sat in the drawer drenched in oil vapors. It really was doomed for the bin, but I was nostalgic for it. I cleaned it up and even tried to give it to one of my music mates. No one wanted it, guys. No one. But I love the color. I mean, I bought it after all. But it's a nice soft surface for working on iPods with. These things are so slippery. And this little grippy table is a lot like um, the leather tables that jewelers used to work on. That's where I got the inspiration. And it's why it's here. It's always been here on this desk, which I've had since university days. This is case number two. You bet you still got the OG. Many a grit was had. The one grit. It's a sandpaper paper joke. The higher the number, the finer the particles, right? 2,000 grit, right? Well, then 60 grit, one grit. It's a single grit. But I'd prepared my iPod selling magnum opus. I'd been keeping the iPod sales money separate to invest in four busted iPod videos and four 256 gigabyte cards with adapters and batteries and whatever. 256 gig cards were super expensive literally a couple years ago. So the trick really was finding the cheapest iPods and hopefully make them like new again to turn a profit. But I knew the profit was going to be huge. It was going to be totally worth it. Nearly no one was selling 256 gig iPods. So I had all the cards and adapters. I think I found about two of the iPod videos I needed. And that's when an old mate of mine, Nick, came around. Saxophonist and great music producer. Years ago, he gifted me these K612s for my birthday. And it's where I got the bug bite for headphones. Great cans. I showed him what I was up to. And he went, oh, that's neat. You should make a channel about this. Huh. I'd never even thought about it. And here's the thing. He mentioned it because Dank Pods is my fifth go at a YouTube channel. I tried to do a drumming along to video game thing back in 2009, fills it out during uni. Years later, Dankmas started, which I still want to make stuff for. Fun fact, I launched it on Vidme first because we all knew YouTube be the stink. Then I made a side channel as a random vlog style thing, but really I was just using it as practice for video editing. I tried another drumming channel thing, but like hints and tips based, but I ran out of video ideas. Other than doing just basic lessons, which I really didn't want to do. Literally by the third video, I was like, oh, I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> 
So I didn't want to make those mistakes again. I've been demonetized by YouTube for two years, right, on Dankmas. So I made sure any music that I use was free to use from the YouTube audio library. And look, if you want to be a YouTuber for a living, you have to have enough work to do. Not run out of video ideas at number three. One video a week is 52 videos a year. <laughs> Do you have 52 video ideas? Now imagine the channels who've been doing it for 10 years. It gets harder as you go. So I wrote a list of videos I wanted to do, some out of my budget, but as a, hey, maybe things work out sort of thing. When I hit 70, I knew it was time to give it a shot. The channel name, right? well, I dank miss, right? I dank music. I'm a loose goose, so dank pods. A lot of channels find their style over time, but I really did want to see on my fifth go if I could just boink into existence <laughs> with a music format, you know, it's all mostly figured out from day one. I sat and thought about it for three months, thinking about how I wanted to do it. I, you know, I wanted it to be a weekly show. Dankmas was like once a month or six weeks. So it had to be just easy to set up and go. I mostly ad lib because I'm a jazz guy and that's how we do it. And also it's more fun to not have to write scripts. Yeah, you know, it saves heaps of time. Uh, for reviews, I have dot points I read off, but very rarely I'll script it all out. This is all scripted out. You listen to me read a script. So we're in 2019, remember, and it's term three school holidays. And I'd finally decided that I was gonna quit teaching and I was gonna let them know when school went back. And I knew I'd have some extra time to work on stuff if I wasn't hustling as a teacher. So a second channel would fit into my week. And it was during those two weeks off from school that I filmed three episodes. First one is on a GoPro, which wasn't great, and the audio went nuts, whatever. And each one since has been on my iPhone. It's the best camera I had, and it films in 4K60. It's still an iPhone, by the way. Oh, remember that PC I built thanks to my amazing granddad on a whim that I'd need it? Well, while none of those other channels went anywhere, it was awesome practice, not just editing, but working as a producer in terms of timing and pacing videos. I had the PC rig ready to go, and I knew once I started uploading the videos, I had to keep them coming no matter what. But it was my third upload that launched launch this stupid thing the one terabyte iPod. And here's the thing, those four 256 gigabyte cards were the ones that I'd bought to sell. The quad board was from my personal iPod that I borrowed out of it, and my plan was then to take all the cards out and then make and sell the iPods. But then that video took off so quick, I never had a chance to find the last two iPods and I never sold the cards. This is one of the iPods with the 256 card in it and this I use in my drum streams. Another one's in a GoPro, I think another one's in a Switch, I'm thinking Old Mate has another one. So this is still a tiny channel at this stage with like a single hit to its name, but hey, I had a list. I was just going down the list, hitting them one after the other to keep up the momentum. Remember, we were in lockdowns at this point, so all I had was time. I'd always wanted to get into headphones since day one, and I only ever got to try audio file sets while I was in studios doing music work. Nick's house let me sit in on mastering. I don't do sponsor stuff, but when COVID hit and I lost all my gigs, I actually did two of them and I hated it. The agency in between is super pushy and have to review your video as well. No thanks. But the money from those two ads I used to buy all the headphones to get me started. You know, the MDR 7506s, mate, the Herdo 600s, they were second hand. That's how I afforded the T1s and the Ordezies. So I could finally hear those top end headphones. And it was 2020 lockdowns. And so I just sat inside and read headphone forums and listened to music. That's why I never claimed to be an expert. I mean, in a lot of ways, I I'm still new myself. Since then, this channel has exploded. I mean, Dankmas is six years old and it made it to 100K subs only a few months ago, which is so rad for such a dumb, fun project. Gotta get on the Google for my plaque. But at just over two years to hit a million and I've got this amazing group of people chasing me the whole way, it is nuts. Guys, I was on course for oblivion. I quit my job to chase a dream on foundations that the world wouldn't change right before a world pandemic. I was doomed to jump and hit the ground a thousand feet down. This channel saved me. I was already roughing it, and that was gonna be, oh man. And look, I've never had such a sense of purpose before. For years I felt lost. It felt so pointless. It, the harder I tried, the more tired I got. You know, the situation wouldn't change. It wasn't rewarding. But this channel hasn't just changed my life. So this thing has exploded and now I'm getting paid in several currencies across multiple platforms and payment systems. I need help with the bookkeeping end. You can get into a lot of trouble with taxes. And now I actually needed an employee for my one man video production business. So I found someone who's working for a big building developer here in Adelaide. Like proper city gig, like business management, you name it. But because of COVID, no work sites were running and after a year of lockdowns, now the desk jobs were getting squeezed. The ground crews were let go 10 months prior. The bosses and higher ups were literally just casually chatting about, oh yeah, maybe we'll just cut her hours and whatnot. I made her an offer to work for me and she said yes.
I hired my mum. She's still at my childhood home and was driving all the way to the city and back and had done for over 10 years. Like to get that phone call from mum and where she just says, you know, oh, it's okay. I'll work it out. You know, the, that real adult phone call. I'm so glad to free her from that humongous drive and that lame business, you know, casually talking about cutting her hours and asking her to order huge crates of wine for a sponsor. And you wonder why I hate big businesses. She's now turned my bedroom into a proper office for my operations. And with her help, I've consulted with experts and now I'm a registered Australian business. I've hired a proper firm to help me manage my finances properly because it's so complicated how to put away from my future and the best way to save up for my goals. Like, I want to talk about money now because this whole thing is people powered and I want to do this transparently. You know, I did those two sponsor spots at the start of COVID and I hated it. And during the ad, everyone leaves. So no one stays for the Frank bit at the end. And I'm sick of ads, man. I'm so sick of it. You know, thanks to all my patrons, I can turn off the mid-roll ads, which are always so loud and annoying and they ruin my videos. Some people might leave the video because they don't want to sit through another ad. There are ads at the start because Google puts them there even if the channel isn't eligible for the partner program. So if they're going to be there anyway, they better dip into the dank fund, mate. And finally, the less ads I show, the less they earn off me, so... <laughs> Google sometimes begs me to put more ads in. I love it. But I, I've come from nothing. I'm from the dirt. And I get self-conscious about my earnings. But I mean, you look at the Patreon number. Do the math at $1 each. The names at the end of the videos are the insane $10 people. It's all I can offer you is to put your name up there. But $1 really is all I want. I'd rather folks pitch in a pinky finger than putting their full back and legs into it. Do put in the effort to make the extra videos just for them. But I've never seen an income like this. Although keep in mind, I don't get all of that, right? You know, there's something called taxes and they take heaps. But it's still an insane income for me. And I want to show you what I'm doing with it and what I've got planned and, and what I dream and hope happens. Let's go on a tour. Whoa! <laughs> yep. Uh, forgive any noises, you know, like we are in an industrial area. This is at the warehouse, right? And there's planes. Ugh, the planes will get there. Look, it's the hot, smelly rig you've been watching this whole time. Yep. Look at this sophisticated camera range, mate. That's a tripod jammed in between an iMac and an IKEA table. But I want to show the rest of the room because uh, it's my drum cave. This is my drum kit from university days. It's from the the 60s, I refinished myself over a weekend while in university. You guys have afforded me something special, which is opportunity, right? At the start of this year, I'd spare money to invest. I, I invested in Dogecoin. I invested in Dogecoin. <laughs> and I used the money to buy all these vintage symbols that I've dreamed of. Like that's from the 40s. Oh, this is like Tony Williams is right. Oh, it's a K. That's from the 30s. Oh, I got the matching snare drum for my favorite drums. Like, oh, I I never owned that. And I've been able to pick up some of my hero snare drums, like, cause I want to keep these forever. One of my drum students who's all grown up and has a studio session is borrowing one of these this weekend. These are my symbols from back in the day. I got this one with my Jazz Award money and this is the first symbol I ever bought new and they're still hanging out here. And that's the stream rig for you guys that watch it. Yes, guys. It's the crutch. This is actually why I've got the warehouse, so I can do drum streams. So every, everything I've explained, you see, drums are my life and my everything. And to have a rig like this is a dream come true. And I've set this up to prove a point. These, these are beginner drums, these are Pearl Exports. I've been using these since 2016, and I mean it, that I love them. That's a beginner crash that has cracks in it, I got for 10 bucks off of me. Uh, I cracked that myself and fixed it poorly. And this one's all bent out of shape with massive holes drilled in it. You you don't need perfect symbols to sound great. Um, I also invested in sheep coin early as well. <laughs> And you bet you I've cashed that out. Basically, I'd love to do drum history videos. The drum kit is nuts. It's one of the newest instruments in music. All right, this is a drum kit that we know and love. Yo, this is how they used to look. And I'm a huge Pearl and Zildjian guy. Like, I don't do sponsored stuff or anything, but I would love to be endorsed. I, I really would. <laughs> I've even bought their embarrassing symbols that no one bought. I'm being serious. I'm, I want to do drum history, and you betcha I've got the flops. No one wanted silver symbols. And now with the sheep coin money, I'm trying to collect symbols from all the decades because they're all crazy. They're all so different. Look what they did in the 80s, guys. <laughs> Let's step out 
into the warehouse. So I'm actually gonna show you some stuff that people haven't seen yet at all. First being my ute. In 2019, my car exploded. Like just to add to that sucky year of no money and proper mentor at university and now a, a real old mate of mine. This was his and he just let me take it and said, pay me back whenever, even if it's in 10 years. And my first Google Pay, the first thing I did was pay him off for this. I love this car, mate, eh? Back when Aussies made things. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you what's beyond this wall. No one has seen this yet. Not even my garbage time people. Yes, I have another channel called Garbage Time. It's more of my vlog styled thing. But you're the first to see it, eh? Behold. The dank fleet. All of these have stories. Uh, 2013, doing an emergency filling gig for somebody. Amazing bazooki player. The gig went really well. Afterwards, he was loading up into this and I said, mate, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. He smirked and said, no way, never. I'll never sell it. A Couple years ago, he rings me and goes, Wade, I need to sell the wagon. 500 bucks, but for you, $300, <laughs> my $300 Mercedes. It only blows smoke all of the time. It, it needs work. <laughs> we'll get to you. It's the little red idiot, which I'm very tempted to call Tiny Tony. That oil leaks from the Honda. Uh. If you want to see this thing getting worked on, head over to Garbage Time. That's where this guy originates from. An all made of mine James found it for two grand. That is a bargain for one of these. They are so funny. Go watch the vid. This one is a fully road legal, state inspected, electric car. Look at the battery packs. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I picked up this one recently and I had to have it because it's an electric nugget. I love nuggets. So this one, this is the most expensive one in the fleet. My dad's the reason why I'm into cars and he had an old V8 Commodore and I fell in love with it. And I wanted an old V8 sedan. I got this for 6,000 and I just love big sedans. The suspension's gone, the exhaust is gone. It needs a service and everything, but it does drive and run. Electric seats, electric rear seats. <laughs> it's a long wheelbase one, automatic air con, and it's built like a tank. This is actually the car that I'd love to be daily driving. All right, now it's time to talk about this guy. That's the parts Honda, don't worry about that one. Uh, this belonged to a mate of mine. It used to be mint, such a beautiful little bike. It was stolen as part of a big motorbike stealing gang. They scratched a dragon into it, put this Guns N' Roses guy on it, and just thrashed it, the poor old girl. I'm warm to these because my mentor and friend who let me get that U, he loaned me a thousand bucks to get a broken one of these, which I fixed and sold to get this which I fixed and sold to get a Harley, which was an absolute bag of bolts, which I fixed and sold to get this, and then wiped off of it by a red light runner on her phone, used the insurance money to rebuild the engine and painted it myself with spray paint cans. I'm being serious, that spray paint, which I then sold for this, which I then sold for this. My mate let me have this for 200 bucks. I'm gonna turn into a chopper on garbage time. And there is one car missing, which is my $500 Honda. It's at home. I cycled here today. I'm still using that car. It is the most reliable thing I own. Cause the Falcon's got weird LPG issues. Durr, make me mad. So I'm still driving my $500 Honda. And if you're wondering like, well, why don't you treat yourself to a new vehicle so you got something reliable? I mean, you know, blow smoke, not road legal, probably was never legal and the battery packs are bad. If I was gonna get a brand new vehicle, you know, I love my old nuggets. If it has four wheels and runs, I'm happy. But on the motorbike, like that black one had done 300,000 kilometers. It would snap engine mount bolts, all the rubbles were gone. None of the gauges worked when I got it. You know, and the older I get, the more I realize how dangerous motorbike riding is. And so yes, I did buy a new vehicle. It's a motorbike. And I, if it was gonna be my first ever vehicle, yeah, I wanted it to be something I could keep forever and always say it's my first. Ah, oh, I got this. Ignore the boxes. <laughs> if you're wondering how busy I am and every one of those boxes was put through the Honda. Yeah, it's a road glide. You've never heard me talk about it because um, I hate it. <laughs> The hydraulic clutch is awful. It's all over the place and it's dangerous, but I want it for the GPS. I was using my motorbike for regular errands, right? That's what I love doing with them. That's why I love baggers. Like do fruit and veg shopping with it. That clutch is way too dangerous and Apple's CarPlay doesn't work unless you buy their headset and keep it charged and then just throw it. It, it made me so mad. It doesn't sound that great. It doesn't run that good. And Harley were wondering why their sales were down. I even pimped it out, no chrome. I went for 
with the gold and brass look. It, it's, it's my dream bike. It's just the most amazing looking thing ever. It needs so much work. It's been booked into the small shop that's worked on all my bikes previous. Cause you betcha I took this back to Harley and said it rides like awful. And um, they just shrugged on, well, that's how it is. So, yay. But another reason why I did this was so I could give my bike to my mum's partner, Gaz. I mean, he is a stepdad to me. He's so good to her. The family home is just in amazing condition because he works as a councilman. And so I gave it to him so that hopefully we could go for rides together at some point. I hate this bike. Guys, we're not done. We're still going, right? Look, there's, there's another door. This has now turned into my office. And nugget storage. Guys, I have so many nuggets for dank pods. It's insane. Thanks to you guys, I picked up a secondhand one of these. Literally, 98% of all videos have been edited on a MacBook and to have a real rig you know yes i've gone back to mac windows doesn't exist to me anymore linux for life and then finally <laughs> right so i i've been collecting vintage games since forever it's how me and my old mate james know each other it, most of these i picked up in 2007 for like three dollars each <laughs> all of these consoles friends gave to me when they left house so like oh would you want my dreamcast and my well, of course I want your Dreamcast. And for Garbage Time, my, my vlog channel, you bet you'll want to play some of these. It's a total man cave in here. <laughs> Speakers all set up. A channel that really inspires me is AVGN. Like he's got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, man, I've got my own games that tortured my youth that I would love to talk about. And they're gonna go up on um, Garbage Time. Who's that idiot there, eh? Look at that idiot. I mean, I'm so into cars because of Mighty Car Mods as well. <laughs> you know, another set of heroes of mine. You bet you I love those boys. Mighty Mook, come and taste the nugget. So as you can see, I'm up to a lot. <laughs> You all want me to make more content? Well, you that's what the warehouse is for. I stream four times a week on Twitch. I've started a second channel. It's been delayed for, for reasons and neighbor problems. They'll get a garbage time video, don't you worry. So yeah, if you want to see me do more of a vlog style thing, jump on over there. Frank's there. I'm sorry I'm not on social medias. My life has been so much healthier getting away from it for the most part. Like people begged me for a Twitter, so I felt I needed to do it. But then I never have anything to post. I really would rather just make a video about stuff and share that way. I had an email I used to list until it literally got clogged with spam and advertising offers. So, you know, that's a loss. I've had some lame run-ins where someone got my mobile number and would call me at weird hours and leave weird messages like, Are you the iPod guy? So I had to burn that number and start again. If I appeared in Discord, it would turn into static with the amount of people trying to talk and then there were people making alt accounts of me you know and then saying awful things to the point where people would email me saying i want an apology for this and they'd have a screenshot of you know dank pod saying something awful so i had to leave i'm so sorry guys it was the only safe way to stop it was to just not be there i had to get rid of my ebay account too because folks were using the messaging system to ask for headphone advice and to beg for free stuff so i know a lot of folks want me to do a po box sort of thing you know but with all these experience, it's just so hard. I'm so sorry. This is a one man thing. I'm spoiled anyways. You've seen all my nuggets and toys. I'm so well stocked and like, I don't want to seem like I'm being rude. I'm so sorry. But there were some things that came in before COVID that I got to quickly show you so the people who sent them know that yes, I did get them. Sorry that I've lost names, but hopefully you know who you are. Like, it was COVID, it was nuts. Someone sent me an iPod that arrived so awfully that United States Postal Service had to apologize. Can't show you the front because it's covered in, oh wow, the iPod just falls straight out. <laughs> <laughs> Can't show details, but look at the pretty stamps. Woodstock ones, yay. Oh, wow, that boy's had a hard life, huh? Someone sent me this bag of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a U2 one. Oh, that's wicked. And a Firewire guy. And a Firewire cable. Oh, that's useful. So there you go. Yes, I do have a U2 pod. Someone sent me Polish treats and they gave me the full spiel about them, about how they work. Sugar is my biggest heel. It's so hard to keep the weight off right. And you sent me a whole box of things. I, I had all of them. All of them. <laughs> I only kept the wrappers because I knew I was going to talk about it. Are you panic? <laughs> this has been living in the fridge for so long. Oh man, it's still half a chelwa. They're all amazing. I can't take things like this anymore. Like, I'm on, I'm on diets now. But thank you. We, like, Polish treat's amazing. And fellow YouTuber sent me this. Bantam? I, I've got another Bantam, but this thing's amazing. It really is a first gen iPod knockoff. It is beautiful. And like, this is gonna get its own video at some point. It is that good of a nugget. Thank you so much. And my old mate JC sent me a, sent me some sh souffles. I'll, I'll do something with them. 
just you watch GC. So I've got this tucked away for a special day. I'm not sure when I'm gonna use it, but like I'm waiting for a special day. AWL Penguin Works sent me this wood bag. Like, man, <laughs> I didn't know you can get wood this thin. Almost looks like a sticker, but then you feel it and it's real wood. And it's actually wrapped around the original back. It's so clever. You still get all the structure of the stainless steel, but then it looks like this. There's their Instagram. Check it out. And big shout out to Elite Obsolete for his iPod store. If you're looking to get a finished pod, where all you do is plug it in and go. Through the iPod Discord back in 2018, 2019, I was looking for fixes for my nugget and Elite was there selling parts. He's been doing it since before it was cool because he always thought it was cool. So I have a link down below if you want to suss out because he really helped me out. He's always been there for the iPod community. He knows pods. And uh, finally, I get a lot of messages from folks telling me that people are stealing the, the Patreon videos with public playlists. I know. I've set it up so my supporters can watch the videos the easiest, so they can add it to their own playlists, enjoy it on their own, and stay on YouTube, as that's where you watch me after all. If I move to Vimeo, it just makes it harder for people to watch, and I don't want to lock it down like that. The best thing I could do to stop people from taking it is to make it as cheap as I can, so less folks are paywalled out. When I downloaded it off the internet, I wasn't evil. Just poor. I looked at all the donation services I could and patrons are one that lets you do a $1 all you can eat. 25 cents a video, all edited exactly the same as you see here. And it's because it's my desperate way to find some reliable income. You know, diverse from YouTube. YouTube is not reliable. Patreon is. Or everything that you see built here is all based on my patron earnings. Every decision I make. That's why I keep saying you guys build it. And look, yeah, it bums me out that people are pinching it because it's my hardcore fans that are doing it. You have to be a patron to get the video link and it's on reddit and discord that they get shared around but it's too rich of me to complain i used limewire as a kid how can i complain about big companies filling stuff with ads and locking down their content if i don't do the opposite now that i'm in their position i just have to hope there are more supporters than thieves and there are so many supporters I, my dream is to have my own house and warehouse. Move back down south, get away from the noise of the city, put myself in a position where I can make videos forever about anything. I'm only talking about the pinched video so people can stop telling me on Patreon about it. Like, it's already so many messages, literally hundreds a week, and I really do try to respond to everyone that reaches out. Um, the only problem is, I've been missing messages now. It's so many, and about 70% of them are headphone and audio questions. I really want to hear from folks, but they're getting really hard to respond to. You know, Headphone questions are like paragraphs and multiple messages. And I only bring it up because my drum stream was actually delayed for months because I got RSI from typing all the headphone questions. <laughs> so to quench them, here's my quick guide. Close backs, DT770s. Yes, 80 ohms will work out of a phone. Open backs, Grados or SR850s. In-ears, KZs or KB-ears. What model? Who cares? Get the ones that look good to you. I'm serious, you can't go wrong. And an amp and a DAC, get a FIO BTR5. The balance out can handle heaps of power. And if you want the HD 600 experience for cheap, HD 58Xs. I've talked about them in cheap headphone videos. And good headphones stay good. Those are my picks for the next foreseeable ages. So I'm sorry if I can't answer all your headphone audio questions. I mean, as you can see, headphones are only a small part of my hobby pool. I'm sorry, the typing is killing me. I don't want to seem rude. I want to hear from you. It's just the headphone questions that are killing me. And Frankie is my genuine pet python. I've had her since she was a bubby. I was buying paint in a hardware store and next door was a reptile shop. The Frank Dynasty began. There's a couple of videos about her on my Garbage Time channel. So, thanks for saving me. Thanks for rewarding my self-destructive need to create stuff. And I, I haven't even shown you the best nuggets. I haven't shown you the funniest headphones or even the mankiest anything. Whether it's dang pods or Garbage Time, we're just getting started. So, I planned a, a, like a proper giveaway for the one million thing, right? <laughs> I've spent 500 bucks setting up my own site, right? Using raffle pass. But to do it the way that I want to do it, you need the pro account. Look, it's my pro key. Ready? Watch what happens if verify. You have a ruffle pro. Oh, and it's gone. So I bought a pro license as well. And not even that works. Look, it just says, you've got the light one. It's the night of like the upload, guys. <laughs> I haven't even started editing. This raffle has taken up my whole week and I just got to call it. So I'm so sorry. I planned a giveaway. I've already started sending emails to work it out. There will be a giveaway. It'll happen. Thanks for nothing, raffle. Frank, this is all your fault. I'm so mad. God. So that's it. <laughs> Huge video. 
Oh my gosh. If you think it's long to watch, imagine editing it. Thanks so much. I keep saying it right. And to all my patrons, and especially these stinky names right here, these people pay too much. I actually beg them not to do it, and then they choose to do it. And yes, $1 a month, I direct to videos, help me chase that dream of owning a warehouse. My sister bought me Lego to celebrate. <laughs> it's foods? Ew, they look like human hearts. Ew, oh, this isn't gonna be good, is it? Well, there you go. Like, very casual video, yelling at plastic. That's dank pods in it. Thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Look at this stinker. We know you make the bad smells in there, Frank. You can't hide from me. I know you make the bad smells, Frank. Your tail's still hanging out, Frank. You suck at hiding. I love you.